Christina Romero, uh, website developer with my own company, KR Media and Designs, and a coach at WP Elevation. And I'm Troy Day, I'm from WP Elevation, uh, which is a business coaching program for WordPress freelancers, and Video User Manuals, which is a plugin that teaches your clients how to use WordPress. And in this presentation, we are, yes, going to give you 101 practical ideas to help you rock as a freelancer. Uh, if you get one idea out of this presentation, then we think we've done our job, and we'll try and leave some time at the end for Q&A. So, you guys ready to rock? Just quick show of hands, who here is a WordPress freelancer and builds websites for clients using WordPress? Yeah? Cool. So the right room. The rest of you will just see for the air conditioning and the comfy seats. All right, awesome. Okay, number one, trust your instincts. I'm sure we've all had clients over the years that we've taken on in good faith and then we get, even despite that little voice in the back of your head that says, this is all going to turn to shit very quickly. And you get a few weeks into the project and you realise, yep, yeah, it's all going south very quickly and you should have listened to that inner voice, yeah? So rule number one, trust your instincts. And as much as we like to be a jack of all trades, we all know that we do certain things really, really well. So if you develop a niche, or a niche, tomato, tomato, uh, you can really help target yourself as a freelancer to work with the types of websites that you do and the clients you work with really well. And develop a wheelhouse. This is something I actually learned from Christina. If you're really good at CSS and really bad at e-commerce, then don't take e-commerce projects on. Just develop your skill set, become really good at it, become a specialist at it, and then just take those types of projects on. And keep learning. You are doing that right now by coming to WordCamp. Uh, just keep continuing your education because your value will increase as a freelancer the more that you know. Get comfortable with the details. Uh, Michael Gerber in the e Revisited said the way to delegate is not to abdicate responsibility and just completely outsource it and hand it off. So get comfortable with the details. If you don't know the technical details, do a little bit of research and make sure that you know and that you're across everything that's going into your desk and actually leaving your agency. And that was suggested by Diana Gaffney. So some of these slides are suggested by our WP Elevation members. Threw it out to a Facebook group and they came back with some great stuff that we included here. All right, go wide and go deep. This is a, a phrase. Who knows that phrase? Those people right there. This is a phrase that we use at WP Elevation when we talk with clients. We really want to understand their needs and their goals on the website. So we go wide with why they want things and then we go deep with each one of those reasons. And then you prevent scope creep. Almost 100% of the time. <laughs> Set deadlines and mean it. There's no point setting a deadline for your clients in terms of the content they need to give you if you're not willing to then back it up and show that there are some repercussions. And also set deadlines for your own team and for yourself. And be serious about those deadlines. And plan your week every Monday. I actually do this every Sunday night. So plan your week out every Monday, then you're not left during the week just bouncing around to all these different things, get it planned out, and then have those emergencies that come up just kind of fill in the week. Create tasks for yourself. We had a, a mastermind day in New York a couple of weeks ago, last week actually, last Friday, and uh, a few of our members were saying they use uh, Teamwork PM as their project management system, and they set their own company up in Teamwork as a client, and they set their own projects up as projects, and they delegate tasks to themselves in Teamwork so that they don't fall through the cracks. So make sure you create tasks for yourself and manage it in some kind of manager. And you always want to continue to grow as a freelancer, and that's not just in work, that's in personal life. So you need to set aside the time for that, even if it's for your own personal development, reading books, um, doing the things that, that are your why, that you love, biking, walking, things like that. Use shiny tools. <laughs> and so I had to ask Christina what she meant by this one. This is one of her ideas. I'm like, what, what? I'm always saying avoid shiny objects, like stay focused. And what we mean here is don't be afraid to pay for premium software and premium plugins because more often than not, trying to take a shortcut or save some money by using a free option will just cause you headache and blow out time and budget with lack of support later on. So be, you know, be prepared to pay for premium plugins and premium tools because more likely they'll let you get the job done faster and better. And then perfect your referral machine means that when you finish with a client, you follow up with them and you say, why did you go with me? And they tell you why, and then you know exactly the type of clients that are, are your, your perfect client. But then you reach out to them and you say, if you have any business, please refer them to me, and who can I refer to you? And that starts the referral machine going, and it helps get that business from your existing clients. Build with WordPress. This is pretty obvious, right? Who here doesn't build 
with WordPress. Ah, no one's, no one, oh, someone put their hand up. Security, I'm the manager. <laughs> so build with WordPress, and if you're, if you're savvy, build stuff with WordPress that you're going to use internally, like a project management system, or a CRM, or uh, my buddy Aaron built a whole proposal um, platform that you can use to send proposals out to clients in WordPress. The more you use WordPress, the more familiar you'll get with it, and the better freelancer you'll become. And we love automation with Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R, Zapier. We automate basically most of the processes that we can so that we avoid bottlenecks. Whenever it's like you have to be there to do something, try to find a way to automate it so you can remove yourself from the equation. Create canned email replies. Uh, we have a rule in our business that if you answer the same email twice, you're not allowed to answer it a third time. It has to become either a canned email response or it has to go into the knowledge base so that customers can find that answer again in the future. When you first start out, you don't think this stuff is important, but over the period of time, you'll find yourself wasting so much time answering the same questions over and over again. If you want a power tip for this one, if you've answered the same email twice, write a blog post about it, publish the blog post, and then use the link of the blog post to answer that question in future. Brings in some search traffic for your website as well. Yep, and um, who's here started a website without receiving the deposit? Oh, no. Uh, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But don't do that. Many things can happen in between them saying, yes, you're perfect, and then uh, getting the check. So wait for the deposit. And if you're working on a live site, and a client wants a change request, or someone comes to you and says, I have an existing site, and I need a redesign, or I need some functionality added, please always make sure you get paid before working on that live site. You don't want to spend your life as a freelancer becoming a debt collection specialist. And I always liken this to when you go visit the doctor, you have to pay the bill before you leave the building. So make sure you get paid up front. And then uh, whenever I deal with client sites, I always use a password manager like LastPass. Some people use 1Password. This way you can actually delegate to other people and not actually hand over the password to your client site. This is critical for the security, for uh, thinking about your clients first too, for their security. It's also great if you start to grow as a team and you can share passwords within the, within members of your team as well. Use the cloud. This is a bit of a no-brainer. I've had a couple of hard drives just stop spinning on my computer one day, turn it on, nothing happens, and I have a, a little panic attack, and then I realize after a few minutes, actually, it's not that bad because 99.9% .9 of my data is either in Dropbox or Google Drive, so I just get a new hard drive, install some software, which is, you know, Adobe subscription cloud. It's all kind of cloud-based. So... Uh, use the cloud not only for you know hosting, but also think about any part of your business and how you can host that in the cloud. Yeah. And save the backups of old client sites because even though you think you're done with them, guarantee they can come back when they don't pay their hosting bill or their site gets hacked. <laughs> and you can charge them to restore their website because you've saved a backup. So it's really cheap to buy an external hard drive or even use it on Dropbox and have that backup on the client site. So when two years later, you can make a little money off of restoring the backup because they. They didn't you know, want to, <laughs> to pay their hosting. And that's happened. That has happened to me. All right, let's do a sprint for the next 10 slides. All right, 23.30, here we go. Present clear proposals. Number one reason proposals don't get accepted is because the client doesn't understand what it is you're actually proposing. Yes, and be proactive, not reactive. So think of things before reach out to your clients. Have a pet project that's not related to a client, something that actually nourishes your soul or your creativity. But control your pet project. Don't let it take you over so that you're not working on your business. Collaborate with others, and this is a this might be a bit of an no-brainer, but if you think you've got your stuff together, the moment you start collaborating with others, it will force you to actually know your stuff and improve your processes. It's working with Troy. Set hours for set things, so don't do Facebook every single day. Choose a day or an hour to do Facebook. Check email at a certain hour every day, and you'll get a lot done. One thing, one time. Do not multitask. Who do you multitask? Okay, please stop that right now. Do not multitask. It's actually been proven to hurt your brain and it's really bad for getting things finished. And then if you screen record your tasks, as you do them, you can delegate to somebody else. You can hire a fantastic virtual assistant who will review your screen recordings and you don't ever have to do that task again. They can do it or they can document it so that you can pass it to someone else. Great free tool for that is Dropler. D-R-O-P-L-R. D-R-O-P-L-R. Run a Facebook group. This has been... Really, really good for our business. Uh, I think Facebook groups are probably better than email lists these days. People respond more to Facebook groups. It's more ubiquitous. Yes, I love to say ubiquitous at the talk. Uh, the notifications are you know, everywhere. You can't escape it. There's more community. It's more engaging. So run a Facebook group and invite people in to start a conversation. All right, and offer a free ebook. Take that blog post that you think is fantastic. Put it actually as an ebook and offer it as a lead magnet on 
their site. So people who come put in their email address and get your free ebook, and you have their email address to retarget them. How's the sprint working for you guys? Good? A little faster. Yeah, pace is good? All right, let's keep it up. <laughs> Make generic tutorials. I remember I made a video tutorial way back when I said, hey Paul, in order to add a testimonial to a website, and then a month later I was making the same video. Hi Dave, in order to, I'm thinking, what am I doing? Just leave the client's name out, make the tutorial once. Or of course you can just use the video user manuals plugin, which does it for you. And the video user manuals, you can make generic tutorials and add them yourself, so you're not stuck with the library that Tori gives you, but you can add on and grow. All right, follow or stalk the influencers. Follow their Twitter, follow their Facebook, get on their email list, see what they're doing and then you'll be inspired to know what to do for your clients. Learn marketing. Who thinks marketing is kind of a bit weird, a bit spooky, and a bit creepy? Yeah? Okay, so the rest of us are okay being spooky and creepy. Hey, this, you, these are my people. This is my time. All right, sweet. The more you learn marketing, the more you realize it's not spooky and creepy at all. It's just all about seduction and manipulation. <laughs> all right, so here, here, raise our hand when we asked if you were a freelancer. We didn't mean to trick you. Uh, but you need to start thinking of yourself as a business owner, not a freelancer. Some people get scared off by the word free and freelancer. So let's start thinking of ourselves as business. Interact with other humans. It's very easy to sit behind the computer. It's a very safe place. Interact with other humans uh, on a project, either, you know, maybe it's just an accountability meeting once a week, uh, or on a project or just business accountability. It really helps you clarify your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And then find a community. We have a great community with WP Elevation. Find a community of people like you who do what you do, because then you'll see that other people are doing stuff you never thought of. Um, it's a really great way to grow. Serve others. I spent a long time on the internet trying to build a business and being really focused on revenue and making money. And the moment I made this mindset shift that changed everything, just concentrate on how you can serve your customers better than anyone else. <laughs> and then host an event if you're afraid that I'm not a speaker, I can't speak. Host your own event and then you become a speaker. Uh, if you are, haven't been able to build a network, host your own event and then you have a network. Know your target audience. You know, you can't be everything to everyone all the time. If you try to appeal to everyone, you'll end up appealing to no one because you'll end up communicating in such broad brush strokes that you'll just end up being beige and you won't cut through. So really understand who your target audience is. A unique value proposition. What's your UVP? What's, what makes you stand out from all the others? Make it specific, make it targeted uh, based on your target audience and then put that as the uh, sort of the banner on your website and people really relate to, to what it is that you offer. Develop processes for everything. The first process you should develop in your business is the process for developing a process, which as Christina mentioned before, is screen capturing everything you do and sending that off to someone to have that written up as a process. And then productize. Uh, you know, we also often think of ourselves as providing a service, but if you productize, you only have to do that thing once. So with websites, we aren't really selling a product, we're selling a service. If you're able to productize that, like maybe website care plans that we'll talk about in a minute, you can do something once and sell it over and over again. Sack bad clients. Who's got bad clients? Yeah? Who's fired the client successfully? <laughs> awesome. People are like, yes! I, my, my favorite way of firing a client is to always say to them, look, in order for your project to get the love and the attention it deserves, you need to find someone else to serve you because I'm no longer the droid you're looking for. Always make it about them. And if you delegate your weaknesses to somebody else, you focus on the stuff you do well. So that means hiring a VA, hiring a developer. Even if you're a developer, hire a back-end developer if you like being a front-end developer. Hire a designer. If you're not really a designer, delegate out the weaknesses so you can focus on your Thanks to Jackie Levy for that one. Consider relationships. Your customers are not just a transactional thing. Always think about how the relationship with your customer can serve you and serve your customer and serve your prospective clients. I always, it's a bit of a cliche, but I like the win, win, win. When I win, when my clients win, and when my clients' customers win. That's the perfect scenario. And uh, who's here ever been talked into reducing their prices? <laughs> no. <laughs> Please don't. Actually, every day you become more valuable. You sitting here right now, you've become more valuable. You can walk out this room right now and raise your prices and be totally justified in doing so. Give yourself a pay rise. Whatever you're paying yourself right now, tomorrow, pay yourself more. And then just find a way to add more value to your customers to fund that pay rise. You should be constantly thinking about how you can pay yourself more money. I mean, that's why we do this, right? We're in business for ourselves so that we are the boss, we are the master of our own domain and our own destiny. 
And if you build an email list, kind of like how I, I talked about before by offering the free ebook, the lead magnet, build an email list because people buy from email lists. They buy less from social media. Uh, it's, it, the email list is still the most effective way to target people and get them to buy. Hire a VA. And a VA doesn't necessarily mean someone invisible with kind of no personality and no face who lives in an emerging economy somewhere on the other side of the planet. A VA could be someone around the corner or in the same co-working space or in the same country. Hire a VA and do whatever it is that you should be doing in the business. Start getting rid of that right now. Virtual assistant, yes. Yeah, or as, as Pete Perry, one of our members, calls them an RHA, a real human assistant. Because your VAs end up becoming part of your team and they end up becoming friends. Yes, then create that blog content so that you can get picked up by search engines. You can start targeting your target audience by saying, this is what I do well, because you have a blog to show them, correct? All right, halfway. Let's do sides. Selfishly, because my coffee is over here. <laughs> Find someone to do your books. Right, and get legal help 
I actually have a sister-in-law who's my legal help, but we should all have legal help and have people review our contracts. Don't just take the contract off the web, hand it to your client, and think that's okay. You have to make sure that you're comfortable and confident with what you're giving your clients. Really? You can't just take the contract off by bring them or no? Bad. Yeah. No you can write off. There, is, there are many things you can write off as expenses. All your expenses here today for work camp, travel, accommodation. Hey, I flew in from Melbourne, Australia. I'm staying at a really nice hotel over Cambridge. That's all being written off because I'm here talking to you guys at work camp. And stay true to your word. We, you know, need to be uh, serve our clients well. By if we say that we're going to do something, let's follow through and do it. Even if you've underquoted the project, stay true to what you promised and follow through. <laughs> I feel like now that my wife's actually in the and room my at this too. talk, yeah. but I really can't say anything. No. Like, I'm just going to leave this slide up here and let you do what you want. <laughs> I got nothing. I can't possibly tell you that this is a good idea, otherwise she's just going to kick my ass later. Next. <laughs> okay, when we wake up for work and we work from home, let's not wear sweatpants. Let's get dressed. Let's treat our business with the respect that it deserves and uh, show up for work. Walk every morning. <laughs> Again, I probably just shouldn't say anything because my wife's in the room. Uh, but when we when we first got together, I would like roll out of bed onto the computer and start working. And uh, after a couple of weeks, Amy was like, no, 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 you're not doing this. We go for a walk every morning. And then we got a dog, which meant we had to go for a walk every morning. But I'm telling you, the morning walk, whether it's on your own with a podcast, whether it's walking the dog, the morning walk is just that, that half an hour that you give yourself, you show up for yourself for that half an hour in the morning, and then the rest of the day is a lot easier because you've given yourself that time. And then get work shoes. This um, it was suggested by Nathan Ridley. It's a fantastic story that he works from home and he has a family. And they know he's at work when he wears his Birkenstocks. And as long as he has his Birkenstocks on, he's at work. So if he's making a sandwich with his Birkenstocks on, he's at work. And uh, they're not to bother him. So if he tries to work on his computer and he doesn't have his Birkenstocks on, they give him a hard time and they call him out. So get something that shows that you're at work so your family who works, who's with you at home knows that you're at work. Value your work. So I've had this conversation a lot over the last eight years of work camps about uh, WordPress freelancers who kind of feel like there's a ceiling on what you can charge for a website because WordPress is free and the plugins were free and maybe you're using a, you're customizing a theme that was only a couple hundred bucks. Just because, just because the, the raw materials that we use might be low cost doesn't mean what you're doing is not valuable. If you know how to build a website for a client using WordPress, you're in like the top half a percent of the people on the planet that actually know how to do that. So understand that you have specialist skills and you need to value your own work. If you don't value your own work, your clients certainly won't. Mm -hmm. And know your why. You need to know why you're doing What we're doing is really not that easy. It's actually easy to probably go work for a company and just check out. So you need to know why it is what you're doing. I have three small kids, five, three, and ten months old. They're my why. I want to be able to take them to the park every day. So that, that's why I do what I do, and I work hard to do it. Set early goals. There's a great book called Traction by Gino Wickman. W-I-C-K-M-A-N. And in that book, he talks about the idea of setting uh, rocks for the business every year, the big, chunky things that you want to get done that year. So we have yearly goals, and then we break that down, and we have quarterly goals. But if you don't know what your goal is for the year, you're going to spend your entire year reacting to everyone else's agenda and opportunities. If you've got clear goals, it becomes really easy to say no to those opportunities that aren't, aren't in alignment with those goals. All right, so we can uh, push through... Push the next yeah, yeah. Reward yourself if you have an Amazon wish list. Anyone build an Amazon wish list and get you some, some off of there. Yeah. Jen. Get an accountability partner. Get an accountability partner that you can talk to every Monday morning for 10 minutes and say, hey, what did you get done last week? Did, did, did you get done last week what you wanted to? If not, why not? How can I help? And what are you going to do this week? That's like a 10 minute phone call every Monday morning. And if you do that every Monday morning, you will find that you will actually just get more stuff done because you don't want to turn up to book club not having read the book. <laughs> and don't work weekends. There's no reason. You're not a 24 7 company. Don't work Don't work weekends. I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> Avoid digital eye strain. So every 20 minutes, look away from the computer at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. This will help you avoid digital eye strain. And then get out of the house. Uh, just, you know, just go get a workspace. Get a co workspace every week if uh, it helps you and makes you more productive. Just one day a week. Just something to get out of the house, maybe work outside of the house. Get a standing desk. I love these things. This and a really good chair changed my productivity and my 
back of my neck pain and my shoulder pain. I've got this cool stand up desk. And the idea is that not to stand up all day, but just to be mobile all day. So stand up, sit down, you know, every hour or so. And get a dog. I take my little dog to work every day in the office. Lucy, she's a bit of an office favourite in the co-working space. And if I'm like stressed out or a little bit tired or I just need some kind of energising, I'll take her for a walk or I'll throw the tennis ball to her or I'll just, you know, rough house with her on the floor. She's awesome. Get a dog. She's cute. I love your office. I had my fabulous husband right there for my Christmas present. Entirely redecorate my office. So I enjoy going there every day. <laughs> and then hide the notifications on your phone. It's a really easy setting. Go in there. Turn it off so you don't see that little badge with the number, and then you only know to check your phone when you actually want to do something. Hide all the notifications. <coughs> listen to music, and listen to different types of music throughout the day. I, I usually start off with a bit of chill or a bit of jazz in the morning, and then later in the afternoon, I'll be like some hardcore German trance, EDM, and keep me going. <laughs> Not really, I don't do German trance at all. Uh, but hey, music can really set the scene in an office and can help keep everyone bright. Here. And then get an online schedule. I like schedule one. Some people like calendarly. Uh, this is for your clients. They can't just call you. They can't just you know expect a meeting. You have an online schedule of the of the time and you're available, and that's when they can speak with you. It's, it's the best. Take a vacation. We're here. We spent my wife and I spent four weeks here in the states. Bit of work, bit of play. Uh, schedule vacations in the calendar. Otherwise, they don't happen and they just slip away. And before you know it, you've been working for two years without a break. Give yourself a vacation. And then take imperfect action. Just keep moving forward. If you just try to do something that's perfect, you'll never get it done. So you can. Oh, it's easier to go back and redo something than it is to, uh, to to not do it at all. So you need to put it out there. Keep moving. All right, we're almost over in the last ten now. Be quirky. This was suggested by Jocelyn Mozak, and I love this because you know what actually makes you unique is what it is that makes you unique. Your idiosyncrasies, your quirks. So embrace your quirks. Don't try and tone your personality down. And be the boss. Your clients are not your boss. You are your boss. They're merely patrons in the restaurant. So you you you're, you set the processes. You set the tone. You're the boss for your company. Fix what's broken. So uh, well, I think what we mean here is if you, it's really easy just to dig in and fix something and put a hack or a bandage on something for five minutes and get it done. But the next time you run that process or you're up to that stage in your project, it's still going to be broken. So fix what's broken, take the extra time to make your processes better moving forward. Oh, my favorite slide, the friend and Aussie. This is really to, you know, just get out there and in there. We're such a global community, and we can learn so much from other people in other countries. What's happened to my business and my life since I met this guy has been exponential, and so we need to get outside of ourselves and outside of our world. So. Oh, <laughs> don't hire your family. Um, and it's because family is easy to hire, but impossible to fire. And you need to hire people that if they're not performing or they're not doing their job, that you can continue to grow your business by hiring the right person for the job. Um, as much as you may love your family and think you're doing such a great idea by having them on your team. I'm always trying to hire my wife and she says, we can work together or we can be married. You choose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, learn to say no. So learn to say no to projects that just don't fit with your ethos or what it is you want to do or what it is you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Oh, breathe. Yeah, this is another one that I can't even really talk about because you know, my wife's in the room. Every day we get, I get home and we're in the kitchen and we're making dinner and we do these big three exhales out because we realise that we've held so much tension during the day. Just And it's proven that screen time, you actually hold your breath when you're in front of the screen. So just take some time during the day to breathe. And don't quit yourself. Many of us have had those moments. I've had those moments where I just like, I don't think I'm doing this well and I can't do this. But if you push through what you said before about fixing what's broken, you won't quit yourself. So don't give up. Save cash, put money in the bank, pay for taxes and pay for holidays. And then live life. So if you're not, if you're not living your life, if you don't feel like you are achieving your why and you are being the best person you can be, go back through all 99 slides and see which one of those you can apply and, um, and, and make sure that you are having that work with balance. Finally, rock it. Do all of these ideas, put all these ideas in a place in your business and own the fact that you're a WordPress freelancer and live it fully. All right, here's a short link for you guys, bit.ly slash 101 ways to rock. If you go there, you can access these slides on SlideShare. And uh, now we're happy to take some questions. Fantastic. We have time. Yeah,
Andrews, if you've got a question, to come down to this microphone here and uh, let us know. And uh, we've got about eight minutes, I think. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, like eight minutes. Yeah. Sure. Traction. Yes. So the book I suggested is Traction, Get a Grip on Your Business by Gino Wickman. G-I-N-O-W-I-C-K-M-A-N. It's a great book. Yes. Um, can you enumerate some of the password management tools? That's like a huge. The password management. I really like LastPass. A new last pass. And it's great for teams because you can um, break people onto shared folders and you can hide passwords and just give them the access. And they put it in their browser so that as they hit the sites, then they have access without having the password. Yes, right there. Uh, any additional ideas about creating contracts and getting Simple contract started, you know, initial contract. Sure, so, the, so, the, so any ideas around getting simple contracts started? So we use Contract Killer by Andy Clark. It's an open source web design contract that you open source. If you just Google Andy Clark Contract Killer, that's a good place to start. But the best advice I got from my lawyer was, uh, when do you get a lawyer to look at your contract? When you are earning more money than you are prepared to lose. That's when you get a lawyer to look at your contracts. Yeah, in the middle end. How much do you charge in you know, a building? Like, I don't know an hourly rate or by the project. That's a great question. Um, we so we I stopped at hourly rate very early on, and we moved to project based uh, fees. We I, I don't have an hourly rate for a whole number of reasons. I can do a whole presentation on that. In fact, I have years ago. Um, but value based pricing and project based pricing, I think, is the way to go. Or um, my friend Andy Clark at Stuff and Nonsense, he does weekly sprints. So you can book him for a week and he's got a weekly rate. So a good idea for that is you actually start with the client and you see what the client has budget is and, you, and they start that conversation. Then you see if their budget really matches their expectations of what they're looking for. Then you can come back and say, that doesn't fit the budget, let's talk budget. And, and then you start from that side, it ends up being a better conversation than you coming out and then saying, how much does this website cost? You actually start with their, their budget and their needs and see if it fits. Yes. But to be able to do a full budget process, you would still, I still base things based on labor, knowing what it's take. I've given a bunch of things like $8,000 budgets, knowing, and I've been able to do this for years, up to a dime. So don't you have that in the back of your head when you're doing and you're creating that? So I think it's important that you know how much. So the question is, you don't have an hourly rate, and you know how long it's going to take to do a project, have you then cost it out? I think it's important that you know how much your business costs you as the business owner to run every day or every week. So I know if we're going to go into a project, that for that business to work on a project is going to cost X per day. And so the fee for the project has to be you know, within the margins for us to be able to make a profit. So yes, you do need to know what your hourly rate is worth. And if you, like in Australia, for example, uh, like a web developer, a full-time web developer in Australia is worth at least 150 bucks an hour if you look at the annual salary they're going to be paid for full-time. So I know if we have to put one of our developers on it, that that's part of the project cost. So yes, you do need to know what the costs, what the business costs to run. Follow-up? Is that based on, you know, including a tax base? You know, you're, you're Australian tax Completely different than ours, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, a lot, uh, you know, when I was working as a freelancer, I had an hourly rate, and P and I start, and I got stuck in the mindset of thinking that if I worked an hour, that that that's how much. But things don't take an hour. You have businesses that you have to run. You have administration. You have all these things you do, following up the client to proposals. All things that aren't being billable, right? Non-billable time. So you really have to think about the broader scope of what you're worth, what value you're bringing to the table, and kind of look lump that in. Now I have a team, now I have a developer and a virtual assistant. So I do have a baseline of how much our week costs you know, for my business as a whole, for me to show up every, to work every day and for them to show up every day. And here's a distinction that might just help you with a mindset shift is that you look at what, look at what it costs a business to deliver a project and put your time into that scope and pay yourself a minimum of 50 bucks an hour if you're just starting out, right? And so the project is going to cost X amount, including your time at $50 to deliver that project. You want to make sure that you can get paid enough for that project to cover all the costs of the business, including your wage, and make a profit for the business. Because at some point, the idea is you want to replace yourself in the business with that salary, and then you, as the business owner, share the profit at the end of the year. So you've got to factor your own wage into the cost of the business. Otherwise, 
you, otherwise you're not a business owner, you, you've just got a job and you're the boss. And believe me, you're the worst boss you'll ever be. <laughs> All right, yes. How do you work efficiently with your bookkeeper and how much time do you spend with them each month? Uh, so we use Xero, uh, X-E-R-O, and they have logins to our Xero. Uh, they do all the bookkeeping. Uh, every time we spend money, we just take a photo of the receipt and upload it into Xero. They reconcile uh, our bookkeepers. I think they probably spend maybe six or eight hours a week, and my business partner might spend a couple of hours a week with them answering questions. Yeah, down here. So her question is, how do you increase value? So if you're just starting out, how do you get to that one where you feel confident charging $150 an hour? Well, so, so from, okay, so, so two things. Seth Godin said on a podcast recently with us, here's a radical idea. Uh, build something that people want to buy. And here's an even more radical idea. Build something that people with money want to buy. So that's step number one. Step number two, from a technical point of view, you just if you're new, you just need to drill, you just need to build three or four websites on your own staging server that no one else is ever going to see. You can put them in the trash later, but just drill three or four websites out so that you can get to know the process, get to know how more plugins work, get to know your sweet spot. I don't do WooCommerce anymore because I find it a pain in the ass. As much as I love the idea of it, I just won't touch it anymore because I don't have the headspace for it. So just drill some websites and work out what your sweet spot is. And then just play to your strengths. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so, I mean, you know how much you need to live. So let's start there. You know how much you need to live. And you can break that down. And then you learn, get part of a community, and you're going to find out from the people in that community, like the Elevation, you're going to find out what other people charge, and you're going to find out their skill set. And then you're going to know what you need to kind of get there, maybe skill-wise. And um, so it's really from working with other people that you get a good grasp on that. But there's another, there's another thing I just want to touch on there, which is mindset stuff. Is that when, we, when I started out, we started out at the bottom end, right? So I started out building websites for 1200 bucks, And then we spent three years climbing up the hill until we were getting $20,000, $25,000 websites. Now, the amount of work that you put into a $20,000 website is the same amount of work that you put into a $2,000 website. It's just that the $20,000 client can get a return on that $20,000 investment. The $2,000 client has no capacity in their business to get that return. So my advice to you would be, start as high as you possibly are comfortable with. You're always going to get knockbacks. You're always going to have to find your sweet spot. But if you start low-balling, you're going to spend three years climbing uphill. So why not just try and start as high as you're comfortable with? One more question. Yeah. Okay, one, one more, more question. question. One more question. Yes. What are you guys using to do your tutorials? Ah, so what are we using to do our tutorials? Kind of a, a few things. Actually, the software that we use to do the tutorials, um, I will use any type of screen capture software now. I've switched to Dropler. Um, but when I make the tutorials to make them generic, when teaching them the website and how to do certain things, then I use video user manuals. It's a plugin that you can install, and it has everything to teach them about their WordPress website right in the dashboard. So how to click on the dashboard, <laughs> how to click to edit a post, how to trash a post. So they're not emailing you, how do I make a link? And you're like, oh my goodness. So it's all right there. It's a little tab that says manual. And then I can add in videos because let's say they have a template from Theme Forest. And there's certain things in that template that are not generic. So I can add in videos to that library. And I just continually, I tell my VA, just tell them to go to the tutorial section of the WordPress website. So I can email reply. And then it's all there. So that's, that's basically.